Hello everybody and welcome to Mr. Stansfield's education videos. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to edit a photo in PhotoP, photop.com, and uh, to take a photo of uh, light and shadow and really bring out the darkest parts of the shadow areas of your photo. Sometimes we call it crushing the shadows. You may have heard that from another video that I shared or um, there are a couple of ways of sort of talking about this, but basically what we're gonna do is maximize the shadow, make the shadows as dark as can be. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. So I've got photop.com open, and uh, I have a photo here that I took uh, in my classroom this morning. I've got a couple, so we'll, we'll actually look at, at each of these. Now you can see that these photos are in color. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is convert to black and white, but if you already captured your photo in black and white, you don't need to do this step. So we're gonna to go to image, adjustments, and then black and white. Here we go. Now you can actually change the way that certain colors appear in the image by changing some of these sliders. I'm gonna just hit okay. Um, but if you have a photo often with a landscape, for example, and you wanted to make your blue sky a little darker, you could change the blue slider or the cyan slider or the red slider. Um, but we're just going to click OK. Now this photo is fine, but it's not what we're looking for. What we want to do is maximize the shadow. So the next step to do that is to go to image adjustments. Now there are several ways. I'm going to show you one. And it's the levels uh, tool. So the levels tool here. Um, the levels panel, there's quite a bit of information here. The thing that you want to do is take the black square at the bottom left of the histogram with the channel on RGB. We're going to drag that shadow slider up until our shadows are black. Now we could keep going and at a certain point the photo just doesn't look like a photo anymore. All we need to do though is just get those to be dark enough so that part of the photo is black. Now everything else I think all of a sudden becomes a little bit more interesting. The reflections on the bottom, the sort of triangle shape in the bottom left, that's a reflection of a desk. That light area becomes a little bit more interesting. There's a little bit of a reflection into the shadow um, as well as the texture of the wall really starts to come out a little bit. So you can overdo this, but this is really a good starting place. Your photo might want a gray slider as well. And so you you drag that gray slider, it'll make your grays a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. In this case, I probably wouldn't adjust it much uh, at all, um, but, but really it's a visual thing, whatever kind of looks right to you. We're gonna go ahead and click okay. And that's it, that's how you do your adjustments here, your high contrast adjustments. Now I'm gonna go ahead to this photo. So again, the first thing, image adjustments, black and white. If your photo is already black and white, you can skip this. And what I want to do is maximize the, the darkness in these shadow areas. So I open up my levels tool and I just drag that black square up a little bit. Now don't look at the numbers here. It's a visual thing. Maybe something like that looks about right. I go ahead and click OK. And then there's another image. Now with this image, I wanted to add one other thing is that cropping can really improve your photo. So we're gonna use the crop tool by clicking over here. And in this case, I want this to image to have a strong horizontal line where that, where that red line is. So let's actually convert to black and white first. So go ahead and convert to black and white, and then we'll crop. Now I just wanted to show this to you that one of the things that you can do with the crop tool, I'm just clicking and dragging here, and I'm gonna fill the frame first. Um, is that you can actually rotate. So if you click anywhere outside of the bounding box, the crop box, you can rotate. Now what I'm gonna do is actually drag the bottom up a little bit so that the line here is kind of uh, on, the, on the line that I want to make straight. So that way I can kind of rotate until that line is perfectly lined up. Then I can adjust the crop. So then I will bring it down here and I'll grab this corner and I'll just drag that up, maybe something like that. Um, you know, I don't think I, I want the um, little bit of the chair in there, so I'll just bring in a little bit more from the left and then I'll adjust the top part here. Yeah, I think that looks about right for, for me. I'm gonna go ahead and click the little check mark here 
Now when you're cropping, if you click delete cropped pixels, um, that uh, is also okay. So either one uh, is fine. Um, now image adjustments, the same thing that we did before, levels, and then we're going to drag that black slider up until this image really pops with contrast. So there it is. You've got some really bright whites and some dark darks. You know, this one I might actually drag that gray slider up just a teeny bit just to bring some of the grays into the dark area as well, and then click OK. So there's three different photos, and we've done some really, in, uh, really simple adjustments using the levels adjustment to bring out the darkest parts of the photo to really showcase the shadows here in PhotoP. As always, whenever you're done, you can save it as a PSD. And if you save it as a PSD, that's going to um, save it as a Photoshop file that's editable later um, or export as a JPEG. Um, either one, um, if you're in my class and you're looking at this, most of the time we're going to be doing JPEGs, but just look at the assignment. All right, so that is how you make some high contrast adjustments for your light and shadow project using photop.com.